Welcome back. Good to see you all. The World Uncut with Mark Barton. Opportunities in a conflicted world. We've done democratizing global supply. Tick. Let's put a tick next to I2U2. New alignment for new opportunities. Dana Filbers here, Deputy Consul General, Consulate General of Israel in Dubai, Government of Israel, and Dr. Aman Puri, Consul General of India, Consulate General of India in Dubai, Government of India. Thank you both for joining me today. It's an amazing alignment, isn't it, to I2, U2? And what it does is it brings together a unique set of countries to tackle many common challenges. Dana, if I can start with you, what do you think have been the key drivers in bringing this forum into existence? Well, I think that the I2U2 is actually a partnership between friends. Israel has a long time friendship with India and the US and a new and warm one with the UAE. And I think that's the base. On top of that, those are countries that are really like-minded and chose to cooperate. Uh, it's a coalition of willing if you want. So I think that is the basis for I that. Like, I like that, a coalition of willing. I, I write down all the wonderful things I hear, <laughs> then I put them onto t-shirts, and then I sell them for $20. <laughs> Aman, what, what are the drivers in bringing this wonderful forum together? So with the signing of the historic Abraham Accords between UAE and Israel, you know, the two countries build the foundation for peace in the Middle East. And I think that is something which the global community must applaud, must recognize and must celebrate. India has been a strategic partner with Israel. Uh, the first country with which UAE signed the comprehensive strategic partnership was India. And all the three countries have a very close and deep relationship with the United States. So yes, it is an intergovernmental forum, economic forum, bringing the energy, the collective energy of all these four countries to address global challenges, transnational challenges. So what are the goals, Dana? Yes, we're going to address common challenges. It's all sort of high level, lofty, which we love. But let's let's drag in. You know, what what are what are the main goals of this forum? What would you say, you know, success looks like? I think that this firm um, is wishing to tackle some of our most severe issues, both globally and regionally, uh, regarding water, food security, energy, and so on. So those are the main goals, which are actually the hot fields of the economic in the 21st century, actually. Um, us as Israel, we also wish for other countries and other partners to see that example and to say we want that. We want to do coalitions that will look like that and to have partnerships with one another. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you a bit later about the possibilities of maybe new coalitions. So, but, but the goals we, we, we've cited, so within those goals which have been cited, you know, what does success look like? Yes, uh, as, as Dana mentioned, you know, we have certain priority areas yes. and we have uh, picked up six priority areas currently, uh, which is water, energy, transportation, space, health and food security. And the goal of the four governments is to channelize private sector investment and expertise in address addressing these transnational challenges. Yeah. So coming back to the, you know, the new areas of, op of corporations, you've got those, you know, six goals, those six areas of, of, of collaboration. What new areas, Dana, of cooperation might we see between I2, U2? Well, we have two projects that yeah. are already went ahead, but we wish to offer new ones. Uh, we as Israel, we like to uh, suggest uh, projects around the uh, space and really innovative technologies. And we are hoping to do that soon, to offer more projects and for them to be accepted as part of the I2U2 partnership. And what do you think on the cooperation front? What other areas of cooperation might we see? So as you know, uh, you're aware that all these four countries have huge strength in innovation and technology. Yeah. Uh, so one of the projects which is being brought on the table by India is the setting up of the world's largest incubator with the support of all these four countries. Yeah, and tell us what this incubator is trying to achieve. So it's still a work in progress. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we intend to create, uh, you know, a 
platform where experts from all these four countries could start working together, mm. where we could co-create you know, the disruption and the innovation required to address global challenges, and in the process, create new unicorns, create value for all these four countries. Yeah, and the, the success is so far, as you say, there's been a couple of projects, investments in India, haven't there, Dana? Yes, yeah. there is the food corridor uh, in India, which we are aiming to have food parks will integrate also food tech and agri-tech. Um, as well as an energy uh, project of clean energy using wind, also based in India, and actually cooperates uh, technologies from the US, the UAE, uh, Israel, and of course, India as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, what does, you know, there's, there's four countries. What about each country, you know, the countries that you both represent? What do you each aim to take away from this forum, from I2U2, from an individual, unique standpoint, Aman? Yeah, like Dana mentioned, you know, we've uh, got the announcement of the $2 billion food parks project. Mm. Now, this is going to be the integrated food park set up in India, and of course, the solar and wind power project. So, likewise, we'll be bringing several projects in these priority areas. Obviously, they'll be set up in all these four economies and these four geographies. It will truly benefit our you know, private sector, our youngsters, our disruptors and the innovators, find new avenues, accessing capital, accessing technology and innovation from these partner countries. Yeah, uh, and de delve a bit deeper, I mean, because that's, yes, you'll benefit from investing in India, but you specifically, your, you know, your, your nation specifically, how else are you hoping to utilize the experience, the knowledge of these other three partners? So we all know that Israel is an innovation powerhouse, investing close to 5% of its GDP into innovation, into yeah. R&D. UAE is an amazing strategic location, the ease of doing business, the speed of doing business, uh, hosting the largest Indian community anywhere in the world. One out of three individuals living in the UAE are Indian nationals. Yeah. So that is a huge area of strength where we, which we can kind of leverage on. Uh, US is world's largest economy, source of technology, innovation, which we can tap into. And what I feel is that when these four countries come together, we can achieve far more than we can, what we would be able to do bilaterally. Is there a sense, Aman, that maybe one country is benefiting more than the others? Is the, is the nature of you know, these collaborations, and maybe there are four nations, maybe one initially benefits more? Does it sort of work like that? How would you, how would you answer that? Not at all. I mean, as Dana mentioned, it is something which we are all voluntarily you know, combining our forces to collaborate and partner. So each of the countries is going to be benefiting from each of these projects, to be honest. Yeah. It's just that these two initial projects have been announced in July of this year. And I must add, Mark, that you know, this I2U2 framework was announced in the October of last year. So it's been a little over one year. And uh, look at the success of this you know, multilateral forum. Yeah. I mean, in the first six, seven, eight months, we've been able to announce specific concrete projects. And this is just the beginning. Now we'll be seeing projects announced in the UAE, in Israel, in the US. I suppose that's what I'm getting at. That's what we're going to see, aren't we, Dana? We're going to see further projects. It's not just going to be India-centric, even though I know that all nations are taking part in, in those projects. Well, you know, it's just the, due to the fact that the first projects needed space and needed land. And while yes. Israel <laughs> don't have that many of that, yeah. uh, India has it. And that's a really win-win situation. Each country will benefit what she needs and will give what she can. And that's the, the core of the partnership. Yeah. How does I2U2, Dana, fit into your vision for the region's future? Well, Israel post Abraham Accords is a new dynamic partner and player in the region. And we hope for the I2U2 will actually open more opportunities for Israel in the region with uh, more friends and partners. Uh, we also hope that we will be able to solve, as I said, some of the regional challenges and to show the region that 
coming to the, together, you can, you can build new things and you can find cooperation because I think that the region share some of the same issues and, and worries, actually. Yeah. W w you would c concur with that? D does that fit in with your vision of the region's future? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And like you mentioned, these projects in India, uh, you'd probably agree with me that, you know, we find enough Indians living in the US, living in the UAE, and of course, a few living in, the Isra in Israel as well, contributing to those economies, right? We don't see enough of Israelis and Emiratis and Americans living and engaging with their Indian counterparts in India yes. and, you know, working together. So perhaps that's something which we can catalyze. Yeah, yeah. And, and you think that will happen? You'll be able to catalyze that? Absolutely. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And you, you started off, Dana, by saying maybe this could be the forerunner to further collaborations, regional bodies coming together. Do you, do you really think that that will happen in a world that seems to be splintering? we might see more partnerships like I2U2? Yes, I believe so and I hope so. Um, I think that the COVID taught us that uh, economical stability and growth is a key element to every country. And countries are starting to realize that cooperation is the key to have that growth and stability. And also we can see, again, after the Abraham Accords, uh, the partnership between Israel and the UAE, the economical one, um, just the, it's almost, I think, $1.8 billion of trade between the two countries only in the first 10 months of the year. And we're expecting it to reach 2 billion. So I think that is a great example of what cooperation and coming together can achieve. Which sounds good when it's said, but in this current geopolitical environment, Aman, it's not easy, it seems, in a splintered world where people are talking about the end of capitalism and deglobalization to achieve these bodies where four nations come together. It's not necessarily going to be straightforward, is it? Well, so far, the experience has been very, very positive, as you can see, and very productive. Uh, I must also add that you see, India is home to one sixth of humanity. Yeah. And the world is witnessing the transformation of India. It's also important to make sure that the average Indian gets the opportunity to you know, contribute to global growth. And economists totally agree right now that in a post COVID world order, in terms of the economic recovery and revival, India is going to play a key role. It's going to be one of the key growth engines. So it's important for partner countries like Israel, like UAE, like US, to you know, make sure that we are able to synergize and complement each other to address these challenges of you know, uh, the economic distress which we are seeing. Mm. Where do you think India is gonna reach out next? It's got this wonderful relationship, this historical partnership with the UAE, which is basically the essence of this forum, the, you know, India Global Forum in, in, in Dubai. What, what are the next steps for India in the region when forging partnerships? So just to give you one example, for Indians, Dubai and the UAE have always been a gateway to the Middle East, to North Africa, to the CIS countries. And you know, also for some of our Indian entrepreneurs, they've been using Dubai as a springboard for the global expansion. In the last couple of years, we've been seeing several of the Indian unicorns, Indian companies setting up their bases here in Dubai to take advantage of this strategic location. Uh, as part of the I2U2, mm. last year we had a large group of businessmen and entrepreneurs from Israel visiting Dubai. And we got them to interact with their Indian counterparts living in Dubai and other parts of the UAE. We also had a team of uh, businessmen from Dubai, Indian businessmen mostly, traveled to Tel Aviv a couple of months ago mm. to look at the opportunities. If you look at the IGF currently here in Dubai, it's not about UAE India. It's India's engagement with this entire region. Mm. We have uh, several of our friends from Israel, from other GCC countries who are participating, and they are engaging with their Indian counterparts. 
So you see and also a gateway engagement. to Africa as well. We had our last panelist talking about democratizing global supply. Is Israel looking not only obviously at the Gulf, but looking beyond there to this wonderful world of opportunity in Africa, Dana? Of course, Israel through Mashav, which is the Israeli aid agency, mm. is always looking for the rest of the world, also Africa, and is going and thinking about uh, ideas and projects that can be done in Africa with the UAE, with India, and so on. Yeah, so the purpose of I2U2 very much to mobilize private sector capital and technologies to solve practical, to solve shared challenges such as, as you say, trade, clean energy and waste treatment. But for those who are wondering, okay, but what's the principled vision? What's the overarching vision that unites these four states? Because you know you have your differences, as all nations do. You have your different uh, partnerships with other nations. What's the overarching principled vision, Aman, that binds these four states in partnership and also will ensure that it's sustainable and it has longevity? I would say it is economic pragmatism, mm. multilateralism and strategic autonomy in a world which is witnessing severe conflict, geopolitical and economic. Anna? I think that we need to step away from the notion that only political or security issues can be the core for partnership. Economical growth and stability is enough for overarching idea of a really stable partnership. Should we get a scream from our audience? Should we mention Morocco again and the World Cup? <laughs> Dana, you, you've got some, uh, some linkage with Morocco? What, what? Yes, I actually have Moroccan roots. All yes. of my grandparents are from Morocco. So yeah. I'm working are you for. feeling excited? <laughs> are you feeling confident? Yes. So yes, Morocco is going to beat France and win the World Cup? I, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> do we, do we, but, uh, but hang on, Wait, I must admit, you know, in full disclosure, my wife is French, so I guess my kids are half French because I'm English, but I sort of want Morocco to win, but don't tell my wife or my kids, I'm like, you, you're a French fan, but it's okay, it's, we're yes. not going to pillory you, you want the French to win, yeah? Of course. Because they won the, what, do you, you don't think two World Cups is enough? They won the last <laughs> one, they, you think they deserve a third? Yes, they're the best team. Uh, do we agree, audience? No! So Morocco's going to do it. Okay, well, thank you both. Absolutely brilliant panel from uh, both our panelists, Dr. Aman Puri and Dana Filber as well. So we've done I2U2, new alignment for new opportunities, democratizing global supply. Next up, foreign policy impact in an un certain world. Stay with the world uncut with me, Mark Barton.